Here we go. Welcome to Catalyst Energies. My name is Dee. Thank you for joining me. I'm so grateful that you're here. This is your Daily Catalyst Astrology Report for July 3rd, 2020. Let's get right into the chart here. Yes. So our moon, as you can see, she's in Sagittarius, the last decan, the last 10 degrees of Sagittarius um, in a square to Neptune in Pisces, Neptune retrograde in Pisces, and is now going to be, um, by the end of today, she is going to oppose the North Node. That means she's going to conjunct her own South Node. And right before that, she's going to cross in front of the galactic center, which is at 27 degrees Sagittarius. And what does that even mean? That means that from the Earth's position, from our vantage point looking out from Earth, we will see that the center of the Milky Way galaxy is in alignment with 27 degrees Sagittarius in tropical astrology. So if you looked at it in Vedic or sidereal astrology, which is based much more on the position of the constellations themselves and the fixed stars, it's a different, it's a different, um, it's at a different degree. But when we're talking about tropical astrology, Western astrology, the sky, the, the circular perspective from our, our singular viewpoint on earth is divided into 12 equal um, pieces within our within our viewpoint. And so that's where we're coming, that's where we're coming from. So she's going to cross the galactic center. She's going to conjunct her own south node and then move into Capricorn, which is Cardinal Earth. This is the actual um, engine of manifestation, the, the natural engine that creates everything that we see. It is um, the home of Saturn. It is actual physical reality. So, and I really, I'm trying so hard to record this in the gaps um, when people are not mowing their lawns. So I'm really sorry if there's a lot of residual noise here. I'm get a little bit closer to the mic, so hopefully it doesn't pick up on it. I don't know why people have to mow their lawns three times a day. I was in the landscaping and I never, I mowed twice a month for people. So, um, but that's just my petty annoyance right now. Anyway, so as we come into this last 10 degrees of Sagittarius, we are really getting into this masterful energy when it comes, and we're having a personalized emotional experience of it. But Sagittarius is about the belief system that encompasses an entire community, a collective, not just our own personal beliefs. That's more of the cancer energy and Gemini, which is the opposition to Sagittarius. So having this square here, it's not resolvable. It is just something we have to lean into. And when we get to the last deck in, the first order of business is to really um, imitate what we, who we want to um, identify ourselves with in terms of mastery, a guru, um, a teacher, you know, and those don't have to be actual people. They can be symbols or images or um, I, I, ideals, that kind of stuff. But at this degree, it's, it's aligning ourselves and, and, and putting on the costume in some ways, imitating this mastery and this wisdom in order to then eventually attain that identity as well, um, which will be really important as she crosses the galactic center and really pulls in a lot of that energy and then crosses and conjuncts with her own south node, which is the old paradigm. It is the karmic history and what we have already mastered collectively that we are meant to let go of. And I think that's important to pay homage to the traditional images, to identify um, all of the archetypes because Sag Sagittarius and the ninth house specifically is about abstraction and then the transference of abstraction, which is archetypal in its very um, nature is about taking the symbols and um, not looking at them literally like you would in Gemini where it's just this empirical data, but you're taking the symbols, the archetypes, you are getting an abstraction from them. You are having an abstract concept connected to them and then transference, the teaching. Um, and this is the part of Sagittarius we're in now. So we want to identify ourselves with this teacher, with this, um, with this with these entities but at the same time when it's squaring neptune in home territory of pisces which is really uh about imagination and creative imagination 
and um, it, it's formless, it's boundaryless. The 12th house is the Akashic Records. It is the emotional connection with the collective. And this degree specifically is um, drawing us to identify that it's, we don't have anything to anchor into necessarily other than our own intuition. And um, a, almost a naive, but based solely on our, uh, on our naivete and our innocence, um, that there is good in the world, that there is hope for the future. And it's not that these things are necessarily mutually exclusive. It's just they're going to provide a challenge because we're going to want to identify it with this leadership, this mastery, um, this wisdom in some ways personally, but collectively, collectively and on a very collective level um, on multiple layers that transcend time and space. When we're talking about Pisces, we are being asked to also consider that just because we have this moment where we want to imitate, um, and it's an important part of the process, this imitation of who we identify ourselves with in terms of master, guru, teacher, belief system, all of that stuff. We, we want to, we're learning about it initially by imitating it, but in the course of that imitation, or again, using imagination, but we're using it um, in order to identify ourselves with a certain belief system, whereas the imagination that comes along with Pisces doesn't identify with any particular belief system. It just is, and it's very intuitive and has everything to do with the, um, the water of all of our souls. And so this is already passed, so it was likely overnight. And we're gonna feel we're gonna feel I think the effects of this as the moon moves through the rest of Sagittarius today, crossing like I said the galactic center and then uh, conjuncting with her own south node. And the galactic center, the symbol, uh, the Sabian symbol is the um, a sculptor at work, right? It is the taking the artistic um, conceptions, right? We're talking about abstraction in the beginning of Sagittarius and then transference, which is the second half. And so the transference is the sculpting in and of itself. And you're sculpting out of earth, you're sculpting out of um, material that is under, you know, under the Capricornian archetype, as far as I can tell. Like you're using actual physical material and sculpting something based on an abstraction. You're transferring it into physical form in late Sagittarius and then you have Capricorn, which is the actual structures itself. It's okay to pay homage to um, the, the images, the archetypes, the symbols that we identify with in terms of our truth and our belief system. Um, and, it's, and, and we emotionally are going to want to put those into form as well as the moon crosses the galactic center. But it's important to realize that these are transitory. The moon moves quickly, just like our emotions and our moods are also changing, um, just like water is always flowing. Um, there's no, I wouldn't say there's no consistency, but just when you feel this intense, like I am going to embody and um, this, this mastery, this belief system, this truth that I really feel strongly about. Remember that the moon is moving quickly, but Neptune is very, very situated where it's at in its home territory of Pisces. So just keep this in mind as you're kind of reflecting on this square today. We're going to see here that the moon, once it reaches Capricorn, this is where the full moon lunar eclipse is going to be, right at 14 degrees Capricorn, um, directly opposed the U.S.'s natal sun, right? And it's going to be an eclipse and then is going to conjunct all of this really large, intense um, transpersonal energy out here in Capricorn, which is, you know, about the structures, the old structures, the traditional structures, the patriarchy, the old systems of go government, the economy, all of these things are being um, torn down, expanded in uh, inwardly to, uh, well, Jupiter and Pluto retrograde in Capricorn right now, especially conjuncting, just created some sort of portal. Um, and it is opened and is getting more powerful and more powerful. Um, and I'm gonna talk a lot more about this in the full moon report that I'm gonna do today. That is also a solar return for the U.S. and how that all fits in together. Um, but 
when the moon comes across here, she's going to join, she's going to start joining all of this stuff. And so up until, you know, this whole lunar cycle, she has been over here, you know, providing an emotional counterbalance in some ways to where all of this stuff has been. And now she's going to come in and identify with a lot of this stuff after the full moon lunar eclipse. And so it's going to be interesting, the second half of the the lunar cycle this the third and fourth quarter is going to be very interesting as she comes through all this energy and then the next new moon is still going to be in cancer just the end of cancer so and at that point once we move into leo season woo, it is on and i'll talk more about that in a different report this is just daily so not much else going on you can still see that the squares from mercury and the sun in cancer are still active, especially with Chiron and Aries. This is, a, this is again, a teacher with symbols, teaching the new symbolism for these traditional images. And with Aries, it's all about potential energy. And so consistently through the Aries archetype, as we go through each degree, you are, we, we are seeing symbols about the consistent relationship with polarity as being inherent to creative potential. So it's like when you have the seed, all of those processes that lead to creation, which are dualistic in a 3D world, is the Gemini energy, right? Because you need the duality in order to create life. Um, it's playing out within the seed. Um, and so it's, it's a consistent realization and experience of potential energy always having duality inherent within and the Chiron wound right now is substantial when it comes to this because we have not you know we are consistently dealing with and addressing and fit and you know not everybody but many people facing head-on this internalized experience of what it means to be whole and also hold the hold the dualistic the dualistic nature at the very same time. It's almost paradoxical. And that's why it's all, it's all encompassed within the seed in itself. And when you think about it, it's not, when you think about it in terms of how life is created in, in nature, it, it's, it's paradoxical, but it makes sense. But when we're talking about Chiron, um, we're talking about some very deep, very, um, very deep wounds about especially in Aries about the self the subjective experience and so you can see that the square is still especially with mercury moving retrograde in cancer means it's going to come back and also square Chiron again um, and Mars is soon going to square Mercury um, during this the rest of this lunar cycle so that's important to keep in mind too that this Aries and cancer square energy is going to keep coming back around um, and you also do see um, there's still a sextile between Uranus um, and the Sun and Mercury retrograde. And so there's still a lot of potential here in terms of our own personal sovereignty, what that means to us, um, how that's reflected in our personalities, our conscious personality, how it's reflected in the way that our minds are working. And the path of awakening in, in real form, which is Taurus, the actual nuts and bolts of reality here, like what makes up the world we live in is the Taurus archetype. It is, nat it is the natural, physical, material world. Um, and Uranus, of course, shaking it up, but still, this is the path. And what's interesting is that Uranus is really close to changing degrees. And when these large planets change to a new degree, um, they are taking on the resonance of that next Sabian symbol. And it's a lot more obvious and it holds a lot more i would say weight and power because they move so slowly so they they stay within this archetypal expression for a lot longer and so when we have the full moon lunar eclipse uranus is going to move to the next degree which is a woman watering the flowers in her gardens i mean it's just we've we've gotten to the and that means we're moving into the second decan of taurus which in the tarot is the six of discs success the moon and Taurus. Um, if we are able to identify this compassionate linking of all humanity based on being a human and having being part of the natural world, when Uranus moves into this next degree with the full moon, and I'll talk a lot more about this, but I just want to bring your attention to it because we still have this sextile as of today with Mercury and the sun in Cancer, and this Cancer energy is really important. 
because this is the root of our own personal sovereignty. And I do believe that it's possible to make commitments without sacrificing your sovereignty. Um, and that's a conversation that is coming up in a lot of different arenas right now, uh, applied to a lot of different things. Um, but it's just cancer energy, especially where the degree of the sun's natal, natal position, 13 to 14 degrees, not only is it conjunct the star Sirius, it is literally the very bottom, right? Like zero degrees is the nadir, but when you get to fifth, halfway through cancer, you go from decision and then you go to consolidation. Um, and that's a really important thing to remember is that we're still kind of in this decision phase in terms of where our personal core values really are, where is our emotional stability and our rootedness. Um, and again, Mercury is going to come back over this territory as well and actually comes out of shadow, pretty much conjunct the, the U.S.'s natal sun. So this is, it's a really potent time right now. So today, just moon and Sagittarius, remember we're going to get really we're going to get really caught up in the transference of all the symbolic abstraction that we have been doing. And we can pay homage to the symbols. We can um, identify how to be a sculptor of our own, um, our own belief systems and our own truth and to create something. But to remember that she is going to conjunct her own south node, which is the past, it is the old paradigm. So not to get stuck there, because that's how you're going to get sucked into the black hole, in my opinion. Um, how you're not is going to have that tether to your personal core, which is the, the core of the earth, really, because um, it all goes back to Gaia and it all goes back to natural law. Like that's, for me, that's where it all connects to. And when you look at astrology, that is an extension of natural law, because we're looking at cycles, cosmological cycles, and how they energetically impact everything else on earth. So that's your daily catalyst for today. Everything you need is in the description box below. I'm gonna start taking personal readings after this weekend and keep an eye out for the full moon lunar eclipse report. We're gonna talk about the eclipse itself. We're gonna talk about the natal chart of the US and how that factors in and do a solar return reading. And also gonna talk about the rest of this lunar cycle because um, it's important to know what's coming as well and how to, because the full moon is a reflection of all of the subconscious intuitive things that often stay below the surface, gets full illumination, and then is able to be cleared away in order for the rest of the cycle to manifest what we set as an intention with the new moon. So keep in mind with the eclipse, the earth casts a shadow on the moon. So that we're not going to get full illumination. It's going to have a distortion, which is something that is really important to keep in mind, which is why eclipses are really challenging energies and they last we're going to see the energy from these eclipses last throughout the and basically throughout the rest of the year so it's important to understand how they impact your chart as well so take care of yourselves seriously take care of yourselves lots of water um lots of whatever you need to do to get your energy grounded and balanced and um expanding on your own field um, the Schumann has really been helping with this a lot is she, the, the earth, she is ascending, she has ascended and now she is modulating her own aura in order to, um, cause if she blasted right away, we, nobody would have made it. I'm pretty sure. So what she's doing is very loving is in my estimation, it's very loving. It's very, um, it, it, it's, it's getting us, getting us ready. It is, um, it's kind of like homeopathy in a, in a way, except you're not introducing something that's necessarily harmful, but blasting into 5D when nobody's ready um, energetically would have been harmful, right? We probably all would have like, you know, short circuited. So um, just allow this process to happen instead of resisting it. And there is a lot of resistance right now and you can see that playing out with people. So I'm going to be doing the daily medicine soon. This is your catalyst astrology report for July 3rd, 2020, and I'll see you on the next video.